by the blood of the Lamb. Take me past the outer court into the holy place, past the brazen altar. Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people and the priests who sing their praises. the coal. Oh, take the coal, cleanse my lips, here I am. Take me past, oh, take me past the outer court, into the holy place, past the brazen altar. me by the crowds of people and the things who sing their praises. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness and it's all supplementary amen and after that I ask brother desire to come and open for us with a word of prayer amen
as we start with this song that Isaiah, when he was in your presence, Lord, you are a holy God. Lord, when he saw you, he was not worthy. But Lord, you come and pass a blood altar and he was clean. And then, Lord, you could ask, who will end? Then he will say, I'm here, Lord, send me. Lord, we know you are a holy God. Lord, as when we see ourselves through your word, which is a mirror, Lord, there's no anyone who is worthy. As Lord, we remember even when John was in his spirit, he saw a book, the mystery book, but when the angel will say, who is worthy? Nobody was worthy. The Bible says even the prophet, even when he saw here on us, there was nobody who was worthy. Lord, but there was only one who was worthy, is you, Jesus. You came and you take the book and you redeem us by your blood, Lord. Lord, you still the same God who is the holy, but Lord, you say under the blood, when you receive your blood and us, Lord, you will pass through us. Lord, we commit ourselves in your hand. Come, O oh Lord, and minister to each one of us, Lord. Lord, we also pray for the preaching of the world. Lord, come and use the men. Lord, also we pray for the leader song. Lord, also lead everything, Lord. We commit even our need in your hand, Lord. So, Lord, we let, let this service in your hand. Come, Lord, and minister to each one of us. We also pray for brothers and sisters who are not with us here. Lord, also minister to them, Lord. We commit everything in your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Just going to ask if you can reduce my mic a little bit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're all happy to be here to praise the Lord and worship Him. Amen. It's a privilege to gather together. Amen. Hallelujah. We just sing, come and dine. The master call it, come and dine. Amen. Jesus has a table spread.
Blessed be the Lord. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything else that I know. Amen. Let's just sing that song. I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything else I know. Amen. In this world, I've tried most everything. And I'm happy now to say there's nothing like religion in the good old fashioned way. I'm walking in the old time way and I want the world to know that I'd rather be an old time Christian than anything I know. Amen. In this world I've tried most everything and I'm happy now to say there's nothing like religion in the good old fashioned way. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I just ask the deacons to come and pray for the tithe and offerings, Amen. We'll just sing a song. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship,
Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. It's the opportunity to be blessed. Amen. As we wait for the Lord to just move among us. Amen. Hallelujah. Just before we pray for the tithes, the offerings, just for their youth, uh, next Saturday, 5 p.m., uh, we'll be here. So um, next Saturday, 5 p.m., we're having a youth meeting. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, amen. Let's just spare our hearts and we have a need. Amen. There's an opportunity for that need to be met today. Amen. As we just offer thanks for the tithes, the offerings. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful, Lord. Father, we come into this world, Lord, Father, Lord, with no ability, Father. Lord, not even hardly ability to sustain our own life, Father, but Lord, you are the great Father, oh God. Lord, you've guided us through our life, Father. Lord, you brought us, Father, oh God. Lord, you've given us ears to hear your voice, Father. Lord, you've provided for all of our needs, Father. Lord, when we weren't looking for you, Father, Lord, you had us in your mind, Father. You had a purpose for us, oh God. And Lord, we see, Father, oh God, everything we have, Father. Lord, it's nothing of our own strength, Lord, but it's what you have provided for us, Father. Lord, how you care, Father. Lord, oh God, for your children, Lord. How you provide for all of our needs, Father. Lord, so with this in our hearts, Father, Lord, we want to bring, Father, oh God, to you the offerings, Father. Lord, they are love offerings back to you, Father. Lord, because you offered yourself, Father. Lord, you laid yourself down for us, oh God. Lord, no greater love has, a, has for a friend that you'd lay your life down, Father. And we're so grateful, Father, that there was a quickening power in you, Father. Lord, to raise that same life up again, Lord, and give it to us, Father, as a, as a free gift, Father. So with gratefulness, Lord, we offer the tithes, the offerings in, back into your hands, that you'd guide and lead us, Father, oh God, that it'll be used, Father, to benefit your kingdom, Lord. So we just appreciate you this, this afternoon. May you just come with your power, Lord, to transform our lives, Father, to bring us a little bit closer to your God. Lord, oh God, to water us, Father, by the water of your word, Father, to give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us, Lord. We just commit the service into your hands again, Father. Just come with your power. We're under expectation, Father. Lord, oh God, this is an opportunity again, Lord, and none of us want to miss it, Father. But let us, like oh God, just reach out by faith, Father. Lord, and possess the thing that you've given us, Father. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, we just thank you now as we continue to worship you, Father. Lord, for this is why you created us, Father. Lord, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. So we thank you now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's just stand to our feet. Amen. Number 160, amen, only believe. Just hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Amen. Everything is changing. We know that God's unchanging hand is there for us. Amen. Time is filled with swift transition.
God's unchanging hand. Just build your hopes on things that are eternal. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we prepare our hearts for the coming of the word. Amen. We just sing, as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longs after you. Amen. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul
Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. As we continue in this time of worship, let the weak say I'm strong and let the poor say I'm rich. Amen. It's what the Lord has done in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the sick say I'm healed. Amen. It's what the Lord has done for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I am weak. Let the blind say I Oh, it's what the Lord has done. Let the weak say. and set us free, O God. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the first and the last, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Lord, we worship you this afternoon and thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so wonderful to us. Amen. As we invite the pastor to come forward, set your wings to the winds of faith. You can fly in a higher place. Amen. Do not struggle. It's by grace. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There are two roads you may take, one by side and one by night. Take the word, take the word of God. Oh, what you see. What will 
number 159 supplementary. Amen. Let your living waters flow over my soul. Amen. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. Hallelujah. That's what we ask for this afternoon. Amen. Let your living water Jesus, just so thankful this afternoon to be in the house of the Lord. Father, to come to this place, consecrated, Father, and set aside for the worship of the one true God. How wonderful it is to be with brothers and sisters of like precious faith. Father, to come and under the banner of the revealed word of the day and worship you, Father, in the true way, in the revealed way of the day. And Father, we count it a privilege Father, the enemy could have held us back in one way or another, but we made it to the house of the Lord. Father, oh God, and now that we have made it, it's good to see one another, Father. But Lord, it's wonderful to meet up with thee. And Lord, you have told us that when we come to our post of duty, when we take our place in the house of the Lord, and the gifts of God are exercised, Father, Lord, oh God, and you are invited, you come amongst us. And Father, you minister amongst us. You know every situation. You know every desire that is in their heart, that is in divine presence. And we pray this afternoon that you come. Father, oh God, and address every situation. Oh God, supply every need. Answer every question. That Father, we may walk out of this place a different people than the way we walked in. We thank you and appreciate you and we give you all glory and the honor. Father, for the things that you continue to do amongst us. For you are always mindful and you always drop handfuls for us to know that you are amongst us. Bless your people. Father, bless this service. Thank you for the singing of the songs. Thank you, Father, for the merry hearts that are in your presence. Thank you, Father, for everything that your people continue to sacrifice. And Father, oh God, do their portion to support the work of the ministry, giving their tithes and offerings to thee. Father, we thank you and even, Father, for the way you bless us that we are able to do this. Continue to rain your blessings upon us, that we may continue to do more, Father, for your kingdom. Father, we thank you and appreciate you. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. Amen. You may be seated briefly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother, if you could just... Give us the chorus, I love him, I love him, because he first loved me. Amen. I Put pressure love on the musicians him. there, I think. We we'll allow them to take a seat, settled, and uh, then we can start singing. I love him. Just my- 
could open our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 24. And I believe I've expressed my appreciation to the leadership team uh, that was taking responsibilities even in my absence the deacons working together with Brother Johnny, and all the musicians, the song leaders, uh, trustees, brothers and sisters, technical team, for the great work. I just want you to know that our work here is not just affecting us, but it's affecting people who are also far. Amen. So people were asking about Brother Paul, asking about Brother Desire, they knew his messages that is preached, asking about Brother Johnny and them. Amen. And uh, so you find that, especially at the height of COVID, some people were not, going, not able to live stream uh, their services. So pastors just identified ministry that they felt had a similar approach, and they recommended to their churches that they would stream those services uh, also together with them listening to the tapes. And so our church happened to be nominated by quite a few. And so we had a number of people um, that were also streaming our services. And that continue to do so, as you know, believers these days do. I mean, when you see we have got approaching 800 subscribers, there's not 800 of us here. So there's a lot of people far reaching. Um, and so just want you to know that the good works, uh, they continue to influence people in a good way, far and wide. Amen. And so that's what we aspire to continue to do. Genesis chapter 24, we start from verse 34. The Bible reads, This is Eliezer. Amen. Uh, we are all very acquainted with this story. Um, but we just want to speak on that subject a little bit. This is Eliezer. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he is become great. And he hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old. And unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. We go to verse 50 of the same chapter. And Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. Verse 54. And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they, arose, they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days. At the least ten, after that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way, 
Send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah their sister and their nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon camels and followed the men. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well Lehi Roy, for he dwelt in the south country. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. And just briefly, I want to speak on, and this is actually, I could have easily given this, the same subject title that Brother Pardon gave his first message when he spoke on the Bible, the book of mysteries. I had a chance to listen to the sermon. And this is really probably what I would believe is just one branch shooting off from that big title. Amen. And as was clearly and ably shown that the Bible, everything that we see in the Bible, these things that you can, some people call Bible stories, are not really Bible stories, but it was mysteries. Amen. But the mysteries reveal one mystery. Amen. For Christ is the mystery of God revealed. So there are mysteries, small pyramids, but that make up the one big pyramid. There are mysteries that reveal the great mystery, which is Christ. Amen. And so this is just an offshoot or probably a little more, a few more things that the prophet said about this mystery. And so this afternoon I would like to speak on the mystery of Rebekah, Eliezer, and Isaac. The mystery of Rebekah, Eliezer, and Isaac. Praise the Lord. Let me have that screen on so that I can monitor my, I can monitor my slides. Amen. And so we want to speak on that, the mystery of Rebekah, Eliezer, and Isaac. Noticing that it's not the only one. Remember, we've, in the past few weeks, we've spoken about the mystery of the life of Rahab. Amen. And we've noticed that though it's something that actually happened, though Rahab actually existed, though Joshua actually existed, and these events actually took place, but they were captured in the scriptures because God, out of these lives, out of these experiences and events, was revealing a greater mystery. Amen? And so we looked at the life of Rahab, and we realized that the life of Rahab was a type of the life of the Gentile believer in the end time. And we looked at the different conditions in Jericho, we looked at her life and how that she was led astray, how that she was in a life of prostitution. But deep down in her heart, she never desired that kind of a life. Because in her was the seed of faith, the faith of Abraham. And we find that that's why the life of Rahab features on, in several places in the scriptures. And they refer to her faith and what she did. And what she did was showing the kind of faith that she had. Amen. And so we start to see that this story of Rahab is not just a Bible story, a good Bible story, but in it is locked up the mystery of Christ and his bride. Amen. And if we can do the same, look at the life of Ruth, the Moabite, and you can look at that story, which is a wonderful wedding story that the minister can use on the wedding day, which is all great, but in there is also locked up a deeper meaning, which is also a further revelation of this same mystery of the bride and his bridegroom. 
and her bridegroom. Amen. And so there's so many of these things. And we look at the life of Joseph and how he was married to a Gentile woman and how he sent his people aside. So he sent his wife aside so that he could reveal himself to his brethren. And we look at his life. We look at his union to the Gentile woman and we start to realize that the life of Joseph and his union to this Gentile woman was also in there locked up the mystery of the bride and the bridegroom. Amen. Brothers, we can take a lot of stories, a lot of characters in the Bible, and when we look at their lives, we start to see that in there was locked up this mystery, the deeper mystery of Christ and his bride. Amen. And it's the same thing, even with this story of Rebecca, Eliezer, and Isaac. In there, it is a mystery that speaks of us, that speaks of you and me. It is a mystery that speaks of Christ and his bride. And so we just want, this is very familiar to many of us, but we just want to make emphasis on that, and we can all go home rejoicing. Amen. In the message, Redemption by Judgment, the prophet on paragraph 19, he says this. Now, there is three comings of the Lord. The Lord Jesus came first to redeem his bride. He comes second to receive his bride. He comes third with his bride. See, he don't come to the earth on the next coming. We are just caught up to meet him in the air. See the beautiful story of Rebecca and how that she got the camel and went to meet Isaac with Eliezer. And Isaac being a type of Christ, the son of God, which he was the son of Abraham who fell heir to all of Abraham's goods and all he had. He was out in the fields in the evening time, wandering around in the field when he saw the beautiful Rebecca coming on the camel. Oh my, that just makes chills go through me. Amen. So the prophet is now revisiting now the story of Eliezer, the story of Rebecca and Isaac, the story of Isaac and Abraham, his father, and he's starting to split it up. Amen. And show us the significance of each character in this story that Isaac represents Christ, represents the bridegroom. Why? Because he is the favored son. He is heir to all things like Christ. Amen. The father who had all things had a son. Amen. And the heavenly father, who has all things, has a son. Amen. And that son was Isaac. But Isaac was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Isaac, in the evening time, was not in his father's palace. Amen. But he was somewhere, amen, somewhere outside, amen, of his father's palace. But at the same time, also just walking in the fields, looking and in expectation when he seen Rebecca coming, the beautiful Rebecca. And Rebecca also seen him and they were able to recognize one another. But in there was also a third character, amen, which was Eliezer. Amen, which was Eliezer. And so the prophet already in this quotation He's already showing us that this story is deeper and has a deeper meaning than what we could think. And I thank God for the prophet. We would have read the Bible like a novel. We would have dramatized the story of David and Goliath. Amen. And jumped up and down and thrown the stone and described the fingers of Goliath. And it would be so much fun for the Sunday school and would say amen and would go home. Amen. But God's prophet is able to look at that situation and go deeper than what actually occurred 
and go and pick the significance of what happened and bring it to this day and show us that there is a chosen seed which may be small but it's chosen to fight the Goliath that has been boasting but the time of judgment of Goliath will come after 40 days which means judgment will come and a small little David of the promised seed will challenge Goliath and will knock Goliath down. So it's speaking more than the Philistines. It's speaking more about, not just about Israel as a small little place, but it's speaking about something that will happen in the end time. Amen. And so you start to look at all these things in the Bible and you start to see that all these things speak about us. Speak about you, brother. Speak about you, sister. Amen. But thank God for the prophet because he brought prophetic eyes. Amen. To look at the scripture and pick things in there and bring them to the bride. And it will take this prophetic class of people to also look at the word that was revealed by the prophet and look at it with prophetic eyes, a prophetic class of people and be able to get the riches of the revelation. Anyone else can hear these things. Anyone else can play the tape and hear what the prophet said. But it takes a prophetic class of people to be able to get the riches that come with the vitamins that were dished unto us. Amen. So the prophet shows us that Rebecca was a type of the bride. Amen. Rebecca was a type of the bride. But the bride did not just come to Isaac. She came to Isaac by the ministry of Eliezer. Amen. And the prophet continues in that same message. And he says, And watch when Rebekah saw Isaac. She veiled her face and jumped off the camel and ran to meet him. It was love at first sight. I don't know what he is going to look like. He may be a big man. He may be a little man. He may be a brown, white, black. I don't know what color he'll be, what kind of hair he'll be, what color eyes he'll be, but I love him. I don't care what he looks like. I love him. Yes, sir. And the church will love him. He puts it in the future, but see how he starts to approach it again in the next paragraph. Amen. And he is on the road now, I believe, left the ivory palaces. This is 54. This is 54. I believe left the ivory palaces coming down through to receive his bride. Then we are caught up in the air to meet the Lord. Is that right? Then we go in for the wedding like Isaac did to Rebekah. And then when they come out from the wedding ceremony, he was possessor. And then when Jesus comes again with his bride to reign on the throne of David, his father in the millennium, he will come with her then as king and queen. The coming of the Lord is a mystery. And that's why there's so many doctrines about it. Amen. Because sometimes we approach it with a denominational understanding. Amen. Where everyone is seated waiting for him to come with horses. Amen. Coming down from heaven. Amen. With chariots of fire. And he's going to come and knock Mr. Biden off the chair. But then the word starts to expound on these things and show us his coming. Amen. And the prophet says he comes in three comings. Amen. He comes to redeem. Amen. His bride. He comes to join with his bride. And then he returns with the bride 
for the millennium. Amen. The three comings of Christ. And then he's showing us there that he has already left the ivory palaces in order to unite with the bride. Amen. And whilst he has left the ivory palaces of the father in order to unite with the bride, Eliezer is already ministering to the bride and bringing the bride to a union with Eliezer. Are we together? So the ministry of Eliezer, the prophet says there, I'll read the other quote. A time of decision. 590418. The prophet says, Then he sent Eliezer, his faithful servant. And then Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, which had been his elder servant, and a faithful servant, and Abraham called Eliezer, and had him put his hand on his thigh to swear by God, by the God of heaven, that he would not let Isaac marry a Canaanite woman, that he would go to the Hebrew family, some of Abraham's people, and select a wife. There is a mystery right there. Some of Abraham's people, and select a wife. In other words, the bride to Isaac is kinfolk to Isaac. Are we together? The bride to Isaac is the same seed as Isaac. Amen. Which Isaac is the same seed with Abraham. So the bride is the same seed with the heavenly father. And if you say you are the same seed, you are talking about the same origin. Are we together? So Abraham says, you cannot allow my son to marry any strange women. I want you to my son to marry a wife who is the same seed as me. In other words, I want my, wife, my son's wife to be of the same origin as me. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. <laughs> so where is this wife of Isaac coming from? Just like was ably expressed, she's coming from the Logos. She's part of the Logos. Amen. She's part of that. She's part of God. And he says, don't marry anywhere else. Go back to my people. And you marry my son's wife. And then Eliza got his camels together and took the journey. Then he came to a place to where he had to make another decision. And that decision was whether he was going to use his own judgment or whether he was going to trust God's judgment. Eliza, the faithful servant, had to make a decision whether to use his character, whether to use his looks, whether to use his oratory skills, whether to use whatever was at his disposal in order to look for a bride, or else brush everything aside and say, I cannot trust all these things. I've got to trust in God. And Eliezer made the right decision and decided to push all his abilities, all his humanity and human abilities aside and say, I will trust God. And he prayed a prayer of faith and he said, Lord, that damsel that comes and gives me water to drink, but not only me, but my camels also. Amen. And the prophet says, and God also had the damsel ready for the task. And the prophet says, and God sent his angel. Amen. Sent his angel also, not to everyone, but to one special damsel, which was Rebecca. At that particular time, at that, the timing was perfect. That as Eliza is finishing his prayer, Rebecca is right there. And also in the heart of Rebecca, it's been revealed that when she gives this man a drink, she cannot just give him a drink, but his camels also. 
God working on both ends. Hallelujah. And she gives the man and gives his camels also, which was no small task. And the prophet clearly shows us that the same beast that she ministered to is the same beast that took her to Isaac. Amen. And the prophet says, and beast in the Bible represents a power. And this beast is representative of the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost, the power that Rebecca ministers to, that will take her to meet a bridegroom. Amen. So when you come to church, don't you worry about it. You are not losing anything. When you pay your tithes, don't you worry about it. When you pay your offerings, don't you worry about it. The same beast that you are ministering to is the same beast that will take you to your Isaac. When you sing praises, when you pray, when you do all these things, the same one you are ministering to is the same power that will take you to your bridegroom. Are we together? The problem is you get locked up in the vessel and you fail to see that Eliezer is nothing but a messenger. Amen. And when you listen to Eliezer, when you listen to the vessel, you are not listening to the vessel, but it's actually God behind the vessel. <laughs> this is where people miss it. Because we are so stuck with the packaging. You wish it was different, but God chooses who be sends. But when you do it by faith, knowing that you are not doing it for any man, you are doing it for God, God sees your faith. Because Rebecca was ministering to Eliezer and the beasts that were with Eliezer, but she was actually ministering to God. Simple little things that sometimes steal the blessing from us because we don't really discern things the right way. Amen. And so he demands, and I want you to notice that Eliezer was given enough to go and get a bride and bring her back. <laughs> when you are working, Eliza had enough wealth, had enough beasts, had enough help to go and get Rebecca and bring her to Isaac. There was no shortage. There's no report that they starved along the way. There, is no, there was no shortage of resources that they needed in order to, keep, to, to stay fed, to stay dressed, to stay protected all the way until Rebecca landed in the arms of Isaac. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Hallelujah. That there is no lack along the way because with Eliza came everything required for the trip. So you don't have to be afraid that, oh, maybe we'll run out of steam. Maybe this revival will die down. Maybe, you know, Something will go wrong and this message will all be nothing. We have enough. Hallelujah. For any challenge, any time. Eliza was going to pass through plains, hills and valleys and rivers and thorny places and smooth places. Whatever it was, with Eliza was enough equipment to see the bride through in order to meet Isaac. So no matter how bumpy the way he gets, do you trust Eliza? Hallelujah. That he's got enough with him. He was sent with enough to make sure that the bride safely gets home. There's no need to worry and panic. Hallelujah. Eliza will see you through. Because together with him comes enough to see you through. That's why you find that he came and visited us with the healing in his wings. Hallelujah. He came and visited us with miracles in his wings. He came, brother, and prayed for bitter waters to make them sweet. Someone will say, ah, what, what has that got to do with salvation? There's things that happened in the prophet's life that when you are super spiritual and you want to spiritualize everything, they don't make sense. But God just allowed him to have more than enough for the trip. Too much. 
He had too much for the trip. Because he even gave the relatives of Rebecca some precious items. But the greatest gift for Rebecca was not some gifts. No. It was the giver of the gifts. It was the source of the gifts. Some people were happy and content with the gifts. Like some people in the end time are. They are content with the gifts of God. But the bride is never satisfied with the gifts. Amen. Because the gifts are not there to help her. She will only be happy when she meets the source of the gifts. And so the bride does not celebrate Eliezer. The bride does not celebrate the gifts. Though these things are good. But the bride recognizes that all these things are to take her to the source of the gifts. And the message is super sign. So you notice we moved from 54. We are now in 62. You will see that the prophet never really deviated from this revelation. Even after the opening of the seals. He just added more details. Notice. Eli is a found the woman. He knew that was her. And notice. He had to deal with two people. Her mother and the brother. The father, the rest of them, had nothing to say. Mother and brother. So is the messenger, the Holy Ghost of God, in these last days, picking out the bride. He's had to deal with the church that calls itself the, the Catholic, the brother, the preacher. That's exactly he had to deal with those two. There was one that kicked up a fuss about it. <laughs> Thank God for his prophet. He's now looking at this situation with prophetic eyes and looking at who was causing problems, who was trying to hold back Rebecca. It was the mother and the brother. And then he takes those two characters and plants them to today. And he says the Holy Ghost even now is having to face these two. The mother church and the so-called brother. What's that brother? That's a Pentecostal movement. The preachers fighting the prophet. Who was fighting the prophet more? It was the Pentecostal preachers. The brothers. That will say we are brethren. That's exactly... He had to deal with those two. But now he said, you go to make your choice. Will you go and look quickly as soon as she heard about Isaac, before she had ever saw him, she said, I will go. Let us go ahead. Next. Why? She was a blood relative to him. See? That was Abraham's brother's child. Isaac and Rebekah were first cousins. Same seed. Same blood. Amen. Blood relation. Showing that the church in the last days will be blood relation to Christ. For the very God that predestinated the Christ, whose was the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth, the church itself its name was put on the book before the foundation of the world. And Rebecca, as soon as she heard of Isaac, there was something in her that pulled her straight to him. Though she hadn't seen him or nothing, she yet wanted to go by her own choice away from mother or... Why? And today, in that light of God, that Holy Spirit ever strikes a predestinated seed whose name was put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. The Bible says that. That's right. The light will shine. You can preach to some and it seems like it's just like water on a duck's back. Falls off. But let it once strike that seed. And watch what happens quickly. 
Something is there right now. Why? It's predestinated seed coming forth. It's got to come. And when that light, the gospel strikes it, they get it. Why did Rebecca accept to go with Eliza and believe the story of Eliza? Because she was somehow related to Isaac. They were kinfolk. They were the same seed. They had the same origin. Therefore, when she heard of Isaac, she knew that her place was together with Isaac. Amen. She realized that this man was not coming with long stories. This man was coming with the story of her life. This man was revealing a mystery of why she was always wondering, where do I belong? Where do I belong? What's the purpose of my life? And when Elias started to minister, she saw it and realized the purpose of her life. In the same way, the bride of the end time, when she hears the preaching of the message, Hallelujah. When she hears the voice of Eliza, she knows that this man is not coming with long stories. He is revealing the mystery of her life. That's why the prophet says, your names are wound up in the mysteries. And as the mystery unfolds, you hear your name. Because the purpose of your life is wound up in the mystery. Because the mystery is speaking of one thing. Your place in Christ. Amen. Any way you look at it, the mystery is speaking of one thing. You've got to come to a realization that you came from God and you go back to God. That your origins are not earthly origins. You may have come from the Philippines. You may have come from Australia. You may have come from New Zealand, from Africa, from Europe. Wherever you've come from, those are just an earthly blessing. But when you trace it back, your genealogies, you came from God and you go back to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that day you come to that perfect realization of who you are, sin has no hold on you. You see, sin holds you because you think you belong to this earth. Sin holds you because you think your inheritance is on this earth. You don't have time for church because you are investing in the things of the earth. Because somehow you are in a state of amnesia. In order to set your priorities right, somehow they are kind of distorted. But the day you know that your inheritance is not on the earth, but is somewhere where you came from and you've got to go back, then all these things will lose their hold on you. Now someone will say, hey, 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 brother, brother, brother. Don't you start touch on those things. Now I'm not saying let us not do these things. Because we need to live. We need to have a living. We need to provide a future, a good future for the coming generations. Amen. We need to do all these things. But I'm saying when the world has got a hold of you. That's a different situation. So this is going to be beyond the normal need to where this thing now possesses you and has got a hold of you. It can only do that when you've lost, you are in a state of amnesia to know what your inheritance is. Because when you know where your inheritance is, the greatest investment you could ever make in your life is to invest in the heavenly things. Is to water the beast. Hallelujah, is to water the beast. That's the greatest investment you could ever make. And then when that is done, everything else comes away. That's why the Lord said, seek ye the kingdom first. And all his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. Because the most important thing to the believer is your heavenly inheritance. So Rebecca, the prophet is showing us that she quickly believed Eliza because she was related to Isaac. There was something deeper in Rebecca that made her believe the story of Isaac. That made her believe 
in Isaac. That made her believe that she was bound and born to be a wife to Isaac. And she had trust, perfect trust, in a perfect stranger in the name of Eliezer because she understood the plan of God that it would take Eliezer to lead her to her Isaac. And all she had to do was to believe the word of Eliezer, was to believe in the direction of Eliezer, was to have perfect confidence in his work, in his ministry, and say, I know this man came from my Isaac, and I know he's not going to ravish me along the way. I know he's not going to murder me along this way. I know he's going to take me, not to my gifts, but to take me to the gift of the gifts. And God gave Eliezer proof that he was not just unfolding fables and he gave him riches. Abraham gave him riches, camels. The prophet says he was the chief servant, faithful servant, that he trusted with everything in his household. And he used those things to prove that he was coming from a place of great riches. Amen. Anyone can claim to be rich, but brother, when you are dishing out precious things, just dishing out to the relatives, and the girl also gets precious things, and they look at the camels, they can see that this man is loaded. They were bound to believe. Anyone could have come with thin camels that are almost being blown by the wind. People who scratch their heads and say, ah, <laughs> the father is rich. These camels are starving to death. You can't even make soup with these camels. But he had something with him to show that he was coming from a place of great wealth. And the end time Eliza was given so much that he flashed this before us and showed us that he was coming from a place of great wealth. That he was coming from God and going back to God. And even a any other minister cannot dispute the gift of God and the gifts of God upon the prophet. They've made documentaries about it. They had never seen anything, any realm of the prophetic like that. Even to this day, they know that no one is as gifted as that man. They can dispute with his doctrine but they do not dispute with the evidence that he came with to prove that he was coming from God. But we are not, we are not focused on the proof. You see, this is where people end. They end on the proof of where he came from. But Rebecca is not focused on the proof of where he came from. Rebecca is focused on the husband where this man came from. I don't celebrate when I see them make documentaries about the prophet's ministry and call him one of God's generals. And that's, the, that's the surface. That's scratching the surface. See, all these things were there to show you that the message of this man is coming from somewhere. And then they look at these things and they harvest these things. And remember, he came, the time he was born, many people also came. And the time he was ministering, many gifts were ministering. The influence of the mighty servant of God was a great influence upon the earth. Ministries, divine healing ministries came up just because of the presence of God that was in the ministry of this man. But some people focused on the gifts and missed what the message was. He was saying, I came from God. I've come for a bride. But the bride, thank God Almighty, is able to see the proof and believe that surely this man has come from the presence of God. And they are more entitled not with the gifts, but with who they have to meet. Because their destiny is not the gifts. Their destiny is meeting Isaac. And so they look and appreciate these things and accept them. But after accepting, where should we go? 
So denomination of people stop there. But the bride goes further. Praise the Lord. Goes further. Let's read this. The prophet, at one time, wanting to know about his ministry. This is in the message, Ashamed 65. Explaining a certain junction he had reached. And he wanted to hear from God. He says, if somebody done something, and you got after him about it, then let me turn to that place in the Bible. You see, the prophet knew that the Bible speaks of us. And the prophet knew that the Bible spoke of him. And he says, I find myself in this suspense, in this situation where I need to know something. But if, you have, if I have done something to turn you against me, I'm sure that is, there is a Bible character that has also done the same thing. And please allow me as I open this Bible to go right straight to that character so that I can be able to know what my fault is. Right? This is the prayer of the prophet. And if somebody, what, whatever they done, it will lean my way. Where I've done wrong or something, you want me to do or haven't done, let me see some character in the Bible like that. Paragraph 94. And I closed my eyes, just let the Bible fall open, put my finger on a scripture, and Genesis, and Genesis 24, 7, Eliezer, Abraham's faithful servant, the model servant of the Bible, being sent to hunt the bride for Isaac, chills run over me. That's my, that's right, with the rest of my message, pulling out a bride. Hallelujah. And so the prophet is looking for an identification of his ministry. Who am I? What am I supposed to do? What do I need to do? And what don't I need to do? And God allows the scriptures to open. And he falls right on Genesis 24, verse 7. Eliza, the messenger, the model servant of the Bible that is sent to hunt for Isaac's bride. And the prophet says, you know what? That falls right in place with the rest of my message, is to call out a bride. This is the message that we have received. And we are here, brothers and sisters, because we have seen beyond Eliezer to the source of the message. Eliezer has been used mightily of God to reveal to us our source, that we have kinsmen, that we are a bride of a heavenly bridegroom. Amen. We are a bride of a heavenly bridegroom. And our attention, we are following Eliezer's leadership, saying, lead us on, speak on, let your message thunder, let it take us. But where has it taken us to? To a union, to a union, a union with someone, that's Christ. That's the purpose of this message. And the prophet in 54, he says, he's no longer in the ivory mansions of his father. He's already left. He's now in the fields. And the prophet says, Isaac did not meet Rebekah. Isaac did not meet Rebekah in the ivory mansions of heaven. He met Rebecca on the fields. Amen. So the meeting, the union, is a union in the field, and then they go and consummate the marriage in the tent, according to that pattern. Are we together? And the prophet says, the next time they came out, they were inheritors, possessors, a king and his queen. The next time when we see Christ, he's not alone. He's now complete with his bride. Why? Because the marriage has now been consummated inside the tent in heaven. And I know there's a lot of doctrines there. But the good thing with the doctrine is tested with the pattern of the word. You see, that's why we look at these things. That's why we look at this story. That's why we read these quotes. 
That's why we look at what the prophet says. Who was he? What was his message? And Eliezer brought about a union. Amen. Because of all the preaching of Eliezer, that description of Eliezer about Isaac, before Eliezer could tell Rebecca that there is my master Isaac, the Bible says, seeing from afar off, Rebecca saw Isaac and started to cover her face with the veil. And she got off the camel. She was able to recognize that that's my master. The message makes the bride recognize who is Isaac. The message opens you up to who is Isaac. And your greatest joy is for you to meet with the person of Christ. Hallelujah. You can hear about Christ. You can read about Christ. You can sit in a church where they are talking about Christ. But the greatest joy of a member of the bride is to meet the person of Christ. Hallelujah. To meet and to know the person of Christ. That's why the Bible says, no one says Jesus is the Christ, but by the Holy Ghost. You know him by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's how you know him. It has got to be revealed to you. Not the theology of it. The revelation of it. And it comes by the Holy Ghost. But you know. That's why the prophet says, how can you receive the Holy Ghost when you don't know what it is? That's why when he started preaching the Holy Ghost series, he said, what is the Holy Ghost? What was it given? How do I know I have it? And some of it he says, don't, don't record. Because copycats will come and do copy and paste. <laughs> and people will start to get vindications that are not vindications. He says, no, this one, don't record it. But what's important is that you know the Holy Ghost. What was it given for? Amen. God wanting you to play your part in his great drama. On Friday, we listened to a tape speaking on the three magis, the wise men from the East. And in there is also locked up a mystery of you and me. Amen. And I'm sure we're thoroughly blessed by that tape. In the message, the church of the living God, the prophet says, it said, we have seen his star in the east, but his star wasn't in the east to them. They were in the east looking west. Amen. So the prophet is showing where they were. West. And now, westward toward Palestine. And so he star. And none of the observatories, none of the historians or so forth, has anything written of it. Or no man in that day saw the star except the Magi. And it led them to the Christ. It was God's provided compass. And those men happened to be the lineage of Ham, Shem, and Japheth, the three sons of Noah. The prophet is now unpacking this story of these wise men and he's starting to drop things about these wise men and reveal the mystery of this story in the Bible. Remember on the tape in the message watching his star that we listened to on Friday, the prophet says they were not just the three of them. They were many, but they cast lots, and these three were chosen. Are we together? The bride is not alone. The bride is the bride by election. The prophet shows clearly that it is material that is spread on a table, but a pattern is put on top, and a pattern is cut, but the material that remains on the table is the same material with the material that is used to make up the dress. But it is election that makes the distinction 
between the material that remains on the table and the material that makes up the dress. And the material that was used by God, the three individuals, the three wise men, were the material that by election, which is the casting of lots, were picked up to represent and go and identify the Messiah. And the prophet says, and these three were originating from the three sons of Noah. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And they came and offered gifts to the Son of God. And he said in Matthew 24, when the gospel has been preached to all kindreds, tongues, and nations, then the end shall be. When the fathers who came forth in commemoration of his birth and laid down gold, frankincense, and myrrh to worship him, then when all their children has heard the message of the gospel. Now, the gospel commonly believed is the word of God, and that is true in one sense. But the word of God is not gospel alone. The word of God is the seed that produces the gospel. Oh, hallelujah. The gospel is not just the word alone, but it is the seed that produces the gospel. We go back to the origins. Once you mention seed, you are mentioning origin. And the gospel has got to be preached to every seed. That's the reason why the three wise men, the three magis, were coming and they were of the lineage by the election of God amongst all the, 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 the majors that were there, that were able to identify the star. The prophet says a lot of people saw the star, but it was not significant to all of them, except for those that were watching by the scripture that something has got to happen. And when they saw that star and how bright it was, they realized there was something unique about that star. And they were watching it. The prophet says they did not see it and start running after it. But they saw it and watched it. What it was doing, how it was moving its pattern. Because it was a striking star and they were drawn to it. He says, until one of them said, ah, it's been revealed to me that this star leads to the Christ, the Son of God. And there, when that revelation was dropped, then the star started to move and lead them to the Christ. The prophet came with pools in his ministry. Hallelujah. He was demonstrating gifts. It was a light. It was a star. And they were looking at this star. The believers look at this star. They looked at it. And they watched how bright it was. Amen. How that there was the first pool to touch the body. What could touch the spirit. But brother, he was leading somewhere. To a union. To an encounter with the person of the Christ. And after these things had attracted enough attention. And people had been captivated by this star. Then the star started to move. And lead them to the person of the Christ. And some people say his ministry is lost. He should have stayed a healer. He should have stayed a prophet. But the star was to attract their attention. And after the attention has been attracted, it was supposed to start moving. And moving them where? Move them to a union. Move them to an encounter with the person of Christ. And only the elected were able to recognize that star and see it moving. And brother, through the revealing of the word, through the serpent seed, through the, why we are not a denomination, through the heavenly home of the earthly bride and the heavenly bridegroom, and all these revelations, through all those things, the people sometimes they could not understand it, but they knew that the star was leading them to the person of the Christ. And they followed. And the star took them there. 
No man in that day saw the star except the Magi. It led them to the Christ. It was God's provided compass. And those men happened to be of the lineage of Ham, Shem, and Japheth, the three sons of Noah. And they came and offered gifts to the Son of God. And said in Matthew, when the gospel has been preached to all kindred, tongues, and nations, the gospel, this message. See, the gospel commonly believed is the word of God. That is true in one sense. But the word of God is not gospel alone. The word of God is the seed that produces the gospel. When this gospel, the seed that produces the gospel, has reached all the peoples of the world, then the end comes. Because people, just like their great, 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 great grandfathers, came with gifts that perfectly identified the Christ, his life, his death and sacrifice, and his resurrection, and his purpose and deity in him. The same way when all the peoples of the world have come and clearly identified before him who he is, then the end comes. So even in the story of the three magi, is locked up your mystery, my mystery, the mystery of Christ and his bride. Watching his star, the prophet says, and on the camels they climbed the mountains, rugged and steep down through the valleys. That's the way we go. Sometimes in the valley and sometimes on the mountain, but just keeps following on. We will arrive if we will just keep following the leading of God's spirit. And as they crossed the mountains, then they must have come down along southward and crossed the uh, Tigris River on the ford, got out into the plains, and the star never failed them. That's the beautiful part about a gift of God. It cannot fail. Why can't it fail? <laughs> That's the beautiful part about the gift of God. It cannot fail. Why can't it fail? Because it's God. So they were following the star. But the star was leading them to the person of Christ. It could not fail to lead them to the person of Christ. Because it was God leading them. But God leading them through the vessel of the star. But it's God. And the prophet explains to those that listen to the tape that when they got to Jerusalem, the star disappeared. The religious capital of the world, the star could not be seen anymore because the people's hearts were clouded by the doctrines and traditions of men. They could not identify the star. By the moment they got out of Jerusalem, the star reappeared. Many people, once your life starts to overtake this message, you start to believe the doctrine of the denominations and the doctrine of all these things and your own life and your own desires and own preferences, you lose sight of the star. But once you come out of these things, you will clearly see the star and where it's leading. May I say tonight, that God has a sign today. It's a sign of his spirit. That where Jesus is, there is life. For he is life. Where Jesus is, there is gospel light. For he is light. Where Jesus is, there is fire. For he is a consuming fire. That burns up all your unbelief and your dross. Now the evening lights are shining. The power of the resurrected Christ is pouring forth his blessings, filling the people with the spirit, signs and wonders appearing, and the signs of Mark 16 following the believer. You see, it's evening time. The same light that rose in the east is setting in the west. Jesus Christ, the same today, yesterday, today, and will be forever. And the messianic sign has appeared that he is with us, in us, and will comfort us, and will help us, 
and will bless us and will lead us to that one who was scarred in the hands, pierced in the side. I believe the same Holy Spirit that's here now will take us up someday to the right hand of God where we will see him sitting. There we shall live with him forever and be his children. He will be our God. That's my heart's desire, is to be with him. That's the purpose of this message. That's the purpose of our gathering this afternoon. Why are we gathered? So that we can meet with the person of Christ. Any gift of God, any pastor, any preacher, any of the spiritual gifts, any help and government, the purpose is to bring the individual to a union with the person of Christ. What makes you the powerhouse is that union with Christ, the Holy Ghost of God, and tabernacled in the human body. That's what gives you power. That's what makes you a powerhouse. Everything that we do has got to help the individual to come to this place. The purpose of this message, the purpose of Eliezer and his helpers is to bring the individual to a union with Isaac. And so Eliezer points to Isaac and says, this is him. All his message is explaining Isaac. All this Bible is speaking of one relationship. Isaac and Rebecca. Christ, the mystery of God revealed. And when that becomes a revelation in the individual, no sin, no temptation, no trial, no attitude of a brother or a sister, nothing can shake you. Whether the pastor greets you or not, that doesn't bother you. Whether that brother or that sister likes you, that doesn't bother you. Whether they agree with you, that doesn't bother you. Because what you do, you are not doing for no man. You are doing for Christ. See, the problem is sometimes we are looking for, for affirmations and, and appraisals and, and, and all these things. It's all good. It's all good when you get it. But there's times when this work, when this life demands that you walk alone. And your encouragement sometimes cannot come from no man. Because probably everybody has got enough on their plate already. In those moments, you need to know who Christ is. That's what makes you stand. If you want to be in a greenhouse and watered, temperature adjusted, stop the wind from blowing on you and everything like that. Oh, brother. Life is not that cheap. This walk is not cheap. Up the mountain, down the valley. The star is not going to lead you on a paved road. <laughs> it's going to lead you to thorny bushes. Hallelujah! Eliezer, the message of Eliezer is going to lead you through thorny bushes. How do you navigate? Keep your eye on the star. Let your vision be full of Isaac. Your determination is Isaac. Your focus is Isaac. All these other things are additions, but your focus is Isaac. Your union, the consummation of your marriage, that's your focus. And when you turn up at Jerusalem and you start to consult certain brothers and sisters, what do you think about this star? <laughs> and they are steeped in their traditions, in their own attitudes, in their own perceptions and interpretations of the word. And they say, which star? Which one? The star vanishes. You start staggering in amnesia. You don't know your place. You don't know Eliezer's place. And you don't know Isaac's place. 
But when they walked and staggered out of all that commotion, all those doctrines and everything else, and gossips in Jerusalem, and they staggered off, and they were independent again, God says, now I can lead you. And they were led to the person of Christ. That's us. That's this message. May the Lord richly bless you. We may stand on our feet. Praise the Lord. Let the weak say I'm strong. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let the weak say I'm strong. greatest love story. The story of Ruth and Boaz. The story of Isaac and Rebecca. The story of Esther and the king. The story of Joseph and Esna. It's a love between the gentle bride, the earthly bride, and a bridegroom. Hallelujah. That's our longing, brother. To unite with Christ. Sing, let's try and sing the power of your love. So that we can, when you are in love with Christ, amen, nothing is too hard. I remember as a young man in courtship, I was driving 1,300 kilometers on a Friday afternoon to go and see Sister Abigail. On a Friday evening and Monday morning, yeah. I would be reporting back in the mine. Yeah. But it wasn't too far. Yeah. When this love was too hard, amen, I would go to restaurants that I've never entered 
and pretend like I know that restaurant just to impress you. <laughs> What's too hard when you are in love with Christ? Power of your love. Jesus, we are thankful this afternoon. This love that you placed in us from before the foundation of the world. We cannot explain it. But Father, we find ourselves so in love with you. So in love with your word, which is you, Lord. So in love with this message. 
Father, but we know it's because we are kinsmen. We're the source of everything. Help us let this revelation be so real in our hearts that we may live the interpretation of this revelation. Victorious lives, wherein everything is under our feet. For we've been made priests and kings because we are of the same blood, same seed as our father Abraham. Lord, we thank you this afternoon for this gathering. May your Holy Spirit, the after teacher, water these words to our hearts. Father, we present our lives to you. You know the challenges we've got. You are God and you change not. Give us overcoming power. May, may, may we wade through unbelief, wade through every obstacle, hatred of self, self-ambitions, our own natures as a people that we've inherited from our own natural peoples. But may the spiritual genes and spiritual characteristics start to find their place in our lives. That when people look at us, they don't see Australians, they don't see Kiwis, they don't see Asians, they don't see Africans, but they see the sons and the daughters of God. Be thou with us, Father. We need you now more than ever before. Thank you for the friendly reminders you give us. To remind us that we are your children. When we are sick, you heal us. Father Lord, when we are in need, you are Jehovah Jireh. When we have situations, you always come and address them. Even as a church, when we get snared, bogged down situations, you come and you sort everything out. Father, you show us that you are amongst us. May we see the miraculous more and more. May we see your power and your light amongst us more and more. And may we walk in it and live in it all the days of our lives. Bless your people that came for service. Bless them that would have desired to be here. But because of reasons that were beyond their control could not be here. May they also receive their portion of blessing. Bless your people as we commit everything into your hands. For your glory and your honor we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my brother. You can give us a dismissal song. Amen. And so we trust that by God's grace, amen, you are all fully aware we've got three services in the week. One service on Wednesday evenings, starting at 7, which is a home tape service. Every home of his own house will choose a tape that they feel led to choose for their home of whatever length they feel works for their home on that day. And we sing a few songs. We pray, we listen to the tape afterwards, we pray. And that's for Wednesdays. And if you've got a brother or a sister that lives nearby that you want to invite to come and join as you listen to a tape, it's not a preaching service, it's a tape service, just singing, prayer, and listening to the tape, you are more than welcome to do so. That's what actually we encourage to happen. Call a neighbor, a brother, a sister, or anybody in your neighborhood. Sit down on a Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, listen to the tape. And then on Fridays, our quiet time starts at 6.30. Quiet time starts at 6.30. And I know it's winter, it's getting darker a little bit earlier. But we've given God a promise that we'll be here for quiet time at 6.30. Let you be held up by traffic, but try to be here at 6.30. It's unacceptable to be walking in at 7. 7 is song service starting. So let us make it on time. And our Sundays, our quiet time starts at 1, I believe. And then 1.30, we start our song service. 1 o'clock, we should be seated quietly. I think when we commit to something, God commits to it. Amen. When we just show God reverence, when it comes to the things of God, we show reverence, we show commitment, we show respect, we show zeal, then it's unlimited what God can do. So let's not allow ourselves to slumber and start getting late for services and we walk in at 7 on a Friday evening, we walk in at 1.30. No, 1 o'clock is quiet time. And 1.30 song service starts, 7 o'clock on a Friday. And even on Wednesdays, don't wait. Ah, no, the chicken is almost ready. 
and then the service starts at 7.45. We all want to be in the same spirit. Uh, the rice is just almost there. Ten more minutes. Seven o'clock. Amen. Seven o'clock. We passed by Dubai. Prayer time. People are spreading their mats in the airport, anywhere, even in the plane. We, when it's prayer time, they have spread their mat and they are praying. In the aeroplane, in the airport, in the mall, they do it. We can't fail to do this, brothers. So let's be spot on on time. Amen. We don't want the devil to steal our blessing because we are getting slothful. Make it on time. Let's do this. God, by his grace, will help us. God, we shall bless you. Amen. Let's just clap our hands and thank the Lord for the word. Amen. In the sweet by and by. Amen. As we dismiss, we'll just sing in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful show. Amen. There's a land that